my everything. Jesus, he loves me. He loves me. Oh, Jesus, how can it be? He loves me. He is for me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He is for me. My God, it's amazing. Oh, Jesus loves me. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in a lie that you were unable to help me, but now, Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my eyes and with my song, O oh Lord, be magnified. O oh Lord, be magnified. Be magnified, O oh Lord. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. I have leaned on the wisdom of man. Oh, Lord, forgive me, and I have responded to them. Instead of your light and your mercy, but now, Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. my song, oh Lord, be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing do. Oh, Lord, 
that my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified be magnified oh lord be Good morning. So glad to see you here today. I'm glad to be here. I hope you are too. To sort of get in the mood, so to speak, focus us on the Lord. I'd like to start with a song called Cornerstone and uh, some words about that, God being our rock, our solid rock and our firm foundation. From Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a a great crash. God has done so much for us through Jesus. And we've come to worship him. So let's sing about him being our solid rock, our cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again. My hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on Him. I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ Set his love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone. 
when he shall come. When he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Fold this stand before the throne. Christ alone. Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. What an amazing God that we have that we can count on Him to be our cornerstone. We can lean upon Him. We can rely upon Him. We can call upon Him. And He will carry us. He will hold us. Well, good morning, everybody. We welcome you to worship this morning. What a great day today is. Another opportunity to celebrate and to worship our Lord and Savior. Just a, one, one announcement that we, we have is when you walk out today, if you would look at the back um, bulletin board there in the narthex, we have things from our preschool. Our preschoolers are, have a wish list going on uh, out there. There are still a few items left, but what's, what's one thing that we have on there is, is, is a future item. We're working on it right now. We want to start looking at where we can be and, and, and how God will bless us. If you go down to our Young Fives room, and, and we will have that day coming up where you can go down and you can see our preschool rooms, see how they're, they're prepared for the kids that are going to be coming in here in about a month. But, but if, when you, if you go into our Young Fives room, we have actually original lights in there. And, and with those original lights, we, when it gets like today, when it's a little dreary, when it's a little dark, um, and you turn those lights on, it, it's a little yellow in that room. It's a little pale. And so we want to put some new lights into that room. So we're trying to uh, come up with a way that we can help with some of that cost. But besides that, if you also look at the floor, where the floor is just all tile, and we want to make sure that we have a good spot where those kids can sit um, for, for circle time, for some learning time, for Bible time, for Jesus time. We want to give them a, a little area of carpeting. And so we're also trying to collect that, collect some money that we can help cover and alleviate some of those costs. So out there on that bulletin board is um, some schoolhouses. I think they're, they're schoolhouse. Yep, house schoolhouses. Grab one and, 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 or, or prayerfully consider and, and next week grab one and, and see, uh, you know, how, how can I help in this case? But also then on the right side, there are still some other items that they are needing for the wish list as they are preparing to, for the start of the school year. We are definitely blessed with there have been those times when we just kind of feel like, you know, okay, God, what's going on? It, it, you know, enrollment seems to be going a little bit slower than normal, but in these past few, few days, God has been amazing, and, and we keep getting more and more students. And, and, and so we continually lift up our preschool in prayer and, and the opportunities that we get to have to share Jesus with these families, to share Jesus with these kids. It, it, what's absolutely amazing the, that we share Jesus with them but it's also amazing just how much these kids share Jesus with us. And, and, and so we are definitely blessed. And, and we, we just want to continue to share and have the opportunity to, to, to meet these families and, and to grow together in the faith. And so as today as we worship him, we're going to be focusing on the hands of Jesus. We're going to be looking at the account from Matthew chapter 14. The, 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 that time of, of when when Jesus is feeding the 5,000, we, we tend to read the story. We tend to f only focus there on, on, the, on the five loaves of bread and the two fish. But as we read the account today, as we go through worship today, you're going to hear this phrase a lot, in the hands of Jesus. Imagine. Imagine the hands of Jesus that were there at that time. Imagine the hands of Jesus that are here today with us. Imagine the hands of Jesus that are with you each and every moment of your life. And so we focus on that. We focus on those hands. So let us come. Let us, let us ask God to remove everything that is hindering us from worshiping him. Let us ask God to, to, to empty our hearts and our minds of all those, those other thoughts, all those other plans that, that are going to keep us from focusing on what he has to tell us. 
And we pray that the Holy Spirit flood this place and flood us, flood our hearts, flood our minds so that we can be transformed in his name. So let's stand right now if we could and let's begin our worship service. We come today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, welcome to worship this day. Thank you. We are glad to be here. Some have come seeking. Some have come struggling. Lord, be with each one of us today. Free our hearts and our souls with your transformation. God is truly with you all today. Guiding, lifting, feeding, restoring your souls. Praise be to God who continually abides with us. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about Paul's thorn in his flesh. God really doesn't say in his word exactly what that was, but I suppose it doesn't really matter because the message is the same to all of us. So Paul is saying, I, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, whatever it was. And God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul responds with, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God gives us that strength through Jesus. Amen. All of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i have in you is more than enough my supply you are my supply my breath of life still more awesome than I know you are my reward with living for still more awesome than I know and I love you it's more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than enough you're my sacrifice you're my sacrifice of greatest price still more awesome than i know you're my coming king you are everything still more awesome than i know and all of you is more than enough for all of me And all I have in you, more than all I want, more than all I need, you are more than enough for me, more than all I know, more than all I can say, you are more than enough, more than all, more than all. Thank you. 
satisfied every need. Thank you, Lord. You satisfy me with your love and all I have in you. And all I have in you. And all I have in you, Jesus. And all I have in you is more than enough. As we continue to worship him, go ahead and have a seat. Lord, we want to lift up your name. The name that is above all names. The name of Jesus. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So, Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory. Yours is a name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What an absolutely amazing name, the name of Jesus. And so we come and we rejoice in Him and we give all glory and honor and thanks to Him. 
Last week we, we came back to this. We started to come back and do the noisy offering. It's that opportunity that we can say thank you, God. That even that penny, even that, that the smallest amount can do wonders if given in the glory of His name. If used for His glory. And so at this time, I, I, know, I know we don't always have a whole lot of kids all the time, but, 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 but uh, you know, if you have just a, a penny or just some extra change that you want to give, but give it out of, out of the goodness of your heart for His glory. Don't, don't just give it just because you feel I have to give. Give it because you know that when done for Him, when done for His work, when done for His kingdom, it will multiply. And God's name will grow. And His kingdom will flourish. So let's bring up, if you, if you would like to do that, time for a noisy offering. get a lot. <laughs> Don't leave yet. Hey, don't leave yet. I'm going to run over there. Yeah, run. <laughs> awesome, Nick. You want to shake it? It means that you were here. All right. Shaking on up, huh? Awesome. What an amazing sound that is, just knowing that it's going to be used for His glory to grow His kingdom. And so as we focus on today, as we focus on the hands of Jesus, as we focus on exactly who He is and, and what He does for us, I want, I want us to start thinking just, just even more about this. The, the whole idea that, that Jesus could have fed the people just instantly, but instead the, the people had to go through some hunger. And as we hear in the, in the account coming up, Jesus even tells his disciples, he tells his disciples, you give them something to eat. The disciples don't realize that God has given them the power. And brothers and sisters in Christ, as, as we hear this, as we learn about this, think about how God has called you and has told you in, in your life, maybe not you give them something to eat, but you, you can share Jesus. You, you can do this for them. You can love them in some way. You, you, can, you can help them when they're hurting. I think sometimes we fail to hear or fail to realize that God has given us that ability to share Him. So hear the voice. What is He calling you today to do? What is He calling you? Who is He put in your path that you can help? From the youngest to the oldest, we can share Jesus. We can see Jesus some way because we have been called to serve him so as we get, get continue in, in in this time continue to focus on on what god is doing for us and in us let us just take a moment and together we are going to confess our christian faith and we're going to be speaking words these are not our words these are words that, that we can see in scripture these are words about who our god is father son and holy spirit and how he works in us and what he has done for us. So I invite you to please stand. And let's join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace and salvation from God above, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in this sin-sick world, growth in the church, and unity among its members, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, ourselves, and all who worship here, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In the darkness of night, in the brightness of day, you, O Lord, are present to us. As we wrestle with situations which seem to drain us of our energy, as we struggle to find out who you call us to be, you reach out to us with reassurance of empowerment and courage for the days ahead. Calm our spirits and prepare our hearts and lives to receive your awesome grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today comes from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 9. It begins at the first verse. And here we read that we are included in the promise because we share Abraham's faith. I'm speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me to witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race according to the flesh is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all who are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, about this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, But also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. And so that is the reading from Romans But as we look here now at the gospel, the gospel of Matthew, and and in the 14th chapter, we read of this account. Again, focus. Focus on his hands. And it goes, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Well, grace, mercy, peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Could you imagine that day? That long day. I'm sure people were already gathered around Jesus early that morning. They were already flocking there. In fact, probably some spent the night in that area because of Jesus. And now the day is, is, is almost done. The sun is starting to set. The people have been there. They've been, they've been just, just, just absorbing every word Jesus has said and watching him heal the sick and, 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 and working miracles. Here are these people. These people gathered together and it was getting late. Now the disciples, the disciples, they were sensible people. 
You have to understand that they, 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 they were thinking rationally. They were, they were thinking because they knew what was going to happen. And, and in their minds and, and amongst themselves, they're talking, we should send people home so that they can get food and, and rest. How sensible was that? That was the sensible thing to do. The disciples knew they didn't have enough funds or food for all the people. So Jesus, Jesus, they're, they're, they're just kind of tugging on them. Jesus, we should send them home. Jesus, send them away. Now we have to understand that the boundaries of the sensible, Jesus does not live within. Think about that. Just think about that. Fishermen fishing all night and catching nothing. It's not sensible to send them back out and, and, and tell them to try again, but Jesus did. And, and their, catch, their catch was world record breaking. They, they were the talk of the town. With a girl, the girl who died that was simply sleeping. It's not sensible for Jesus to state that, but Jesus did. And he showed it to them by raising this girl from the dead. And now 5,000 hungry people, 5,000 plus, we were talking 5,000 men, not including women and children. Here they are. And Jesus tells the disciples, you give them something to eat. How sensible is that? Maybe the disciples were getting used to this by now. Right? They, they didn't object. They, they, they simply took what they have and, and they gave it to Jesus. They had five loaves of bread and, and, and two fish. And that's enough. Because anything in the hands of Jesus is always enough. Anything in the hands of Jesus is more than enough. Jesus takes, takes the, the, the bread and the fish and he says grace. He, he, he says a blessing and gives a blessing from God for those hands that, that gave them the bread and the fish. And then the bread, it was passed from the hands of Jesus to the disciples, to the people. From the hands of Jesus to the hands of the disciples, to the hands of the people. And from the disciples' hands, they gave all who were there something to eat. You give them something to eat. And they did. That the people there, they had all they could eat. You know, not just first, but seconds and possibly thirds. Their bellies were full. Jesus is lavished with his gifts. He didn't hand out exact portions for each person. He didn't sit there and try to figure out how much bread and how much fish each person should have. It wasn't, here's your portion, that's enough, now, now go. Uh -uh. Jesus gives, and he gives, and he keeps on giving. It was more than enough food for all those people. More than we could have ever expected. More than we could have ever imagined. Jesus is our, our giving God in, in human flesh. Jesus, the, the one who came in in fulfillment. Jesus providing bread and fish. Jesus providing body and blood without money, without price, so that, that all may come and that all may be filled. I love that word, all. When we think of this word, all, it, it, it's, it's more than just the people in the Old Testament. Or, or the 5,000 that were gathered there that day in the countryside, all. It, it's you and me. It's you and me here today. The feeding from our, our Lord began then and it continues now even today because today we have come to this place and, and to receive his food from the hands of his servants. Jesus is still feeding multitudes. Look at, look at all the churches that are gathering this morning today. Jesus is still feeding and it isn't just bread and fish. It isn't just bread and wine. 
It's his very own body and blood. And as we gather, he doesn't just send us away in search of our own spiritual nourishment. But he comes to provide for us. He doesn't just give us a crumb or, or just a morsel, but an abundance, an abundance of his forgiveness, an abundance of his salvation. He's filling us with him and with his life. That is Jesus. That is our Savior. I think too many times when, when, when we start thinking uh, about the meal, we, we start thinking that when we come forward, we are the guests. But with Jesus, guests do not remain just guests. When you get Jesus, you get adoption. When you get Jesus, you get the glory, the covenants. You get the giving of the law, the worship, the patriarchs. You get the promises. These things given for you. You, the people of God, through faith in Christ. All that was given for you, given, given through your baptism. He does not withhold anything from you. He gives you all that he is and all that he has. And he makes you his own. He calls you his child. I think when we read this story, when we read this account... We, we spend too much time focusing on, on the bread and the fish. But have you ever read this story, this account, and see yourself there? In the story of the, Jesus feeding the 5,000, we are not ju just sitting with the people and receiving the gift of Jesus. We are also standing with Jesus. We were standing there just like the disciples. We stand with Jesus as givers. Because as giver, that's what the disciples were doing. That's what pastors are doing when he calls them to feed the crowds. And you, you are givers because you have been called. You have been called by Jesus into the priesthood of believers. He has given you the places to serve, the people to serve. He's given it to you in all vocations, where you are, what you do, in families, as, as friends, as co-workers, as neighbors, and more. In these roles, you too stand with Jesus for those around you in the world. Those who have all kinds of needs. He calls you as givers. We stand with Jesus. And, and can we hear what he's telling us? It's actually very simple. Jesus told the disciples that they're hungry to give them something to eat. And he's telling us they're in need. Then you, you help them. You love them. Love all the people, no matter how good they are or, or no matter how much they get on your nerves. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies. Do good to all people. Help, serve, and, and pray for them. Be humble. Consider others better than yourself. And above all, forgive. Forgive them, no matter what, no strings attached. Maybe those, that list sounds so nonsensible to you. Maybe it, it sounds like it, it doesn't make sense, so I can't do this. It, 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 it makes no sense, just like Jesus was telling the disciples to feed the people. Maybe you're thinking, I can't do those things. It, it's way too much for me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I got a bum knee. I, I, got, I got ten miserable fingers. I got two left feet. 
Look at me. Look inside of me. How, how can I do what you're calling me to do? How can I, I feed these people? How can I, I help these people, love these people when I am hurting inside, when I am struggling inside, when I am sinful, when I am doubting? How am I supposed to do what you've asked me to do? But remember, Jesus does not work in the bounds of sensible. Just like, just like the disciples, look at what you have. Because in the hands of Jesus, it's enough. In the hands of Jesus, no, no matter who you are, no matter your shortcomings and failures, no matter your doubts and fears, your age, your health, your problems, your, your past, in the hands of Jesus, it doesn't matter. In the hands of Jesus, what you are, what you have, is enough. In the hands of Jesus, it's always more than enough. It's amazing how five loaves of bread and two fish in Jesus' hands fed so many people. But look at his hands. Those are the same hands that were nailed to the cross at Calvary. Those hands of Jesus came to provide what we needed the most, restoration in our life with God and the forgiveness of our sins. And he provides that for, for five, not just 5,000 or 5 million or 5 billion, but each and every person from Adam to the very last infant before Jesus comes again. Every person, all people, that's you and, and me. Jesus uh, ascended the cross and, and, and took our separation on him. He took our condemnation and he died for us. He took our sin and he took our death so that we can live with him. Through his rising, he gives us life. He, he lives and he gives us those gifts, those gifts that were won for us, those gifts that he gives and continues to work for us, and he feeds us and forgives us with those gifts. Because in the hands of Jesus, we see his work being done. The hands of Jesus have worked and, and they are still working for us. In, in the waters of baptism, the, the hands have made saints out of sinners. The hands have made sons and daughters out of rebels. In absolution, that the hands of Jesus takes the person who was plunged into the filth of the filth of sin of the world and washed us clean with his forgiveness. Forgiveness that isn't even measured out. Forgiveness that, that is lavishly poured upon us. And with those words, his, his hands pull you out of the pit of sin and rescues you and restores you from prodigals to sons and daughters of the one true king. The hands of Jesus, in his hands, that the bread and wine become his own life-giving body and blood, given to feed us with his forgiveness, with his life, his salvation. A feast, a feast that will never run out a feast that is there as often as we need it. A feast that even at the end of this life will not end, but will continue forever in heaven. In the hands of Jesus, we become what we were not before. For in the hands of Jesus, we receive all that we need and even more. In the hands of Jesus, we can live under his blessing and love. So that we are, are, are not going to be all we want to be. So that we can be all that he has made us to be. So that we can live, live a life and, and love and serve and forgive just as we are loved and served and forgiven. As it was then, it still is today. Because there's, there's more Jesus than we think 
or more Jesus than we expect. There's more Jesus given to us and through us. That is why he calls us. That is why we stand with him as his disciples. Because it comes from his hands into ours. And from our hands into the world. So that the people around us can know the true love and forgiveness won by him. So that people can experience the same thing that we experience each and every moment when we come to Him in confession. So people can experience that same feast that we feast on each and every moment, that that feast that never ends. From His hands to ours, to the world. Not so that we can be arrogant and finger point. Not so that we, we, we can act like we are better than everyone else. But so that people can experience the loving hands of our Lord and Savior. So that people can experience being loved and served and forgiven. you see the hands of Jesus? Can you see the hands of Jesus giving more than enough to the people? Can you see the hands of Jesus giving more than enough Because in the hands of Jesus, everything we have is more than enough. In his most precious name and in his hands, we live. Amen. I'd just like us to take a moment right now as, as we focus on those hands, those, those loving hands, those nail-pierced hands that took it all for us. And I, and I want you to take a posture right now, a posture of worship. It, it, it could be sitting if you need to stay seated. If you, if you want to kneel and turn and, and, and bow and, and kneel on, on your chair, you can. If, if you want to stand, you can stand. If, if you want to cry, you can cry. If you want to raise your hands, raise your hands. But let's come to him and, and realize that through his hands, the forgiveness is being poured out upon us through his nail-pierced hands, he reminds us just how much He loves us. And, and so we come to Him right now in, in, in this moment, this time of confession, in His hands, knowing that grace is more than what we ever deserve, that it's more than enough. So right at this moment, I invite you to take that posture. If you want to stand, please stand. If you just want to stay seated and, and put your hands in your head, if you just want to bow your head. And let's come before him. One of my favorite psalms is Psalm 51. And it, it goes from verses 1 through 12. And I like to read that and make this our time of confession. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth and in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in your, the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. 
and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Heavenly Father, we come to you as sinners. We come to you needing the gift of forgiveness. We come to you, Heavenly Father, seeing your hands. But Lord, sometimes we struggle through that. But in your hands, grace is lavishly poured out upon us. Through your hands that were nailed upon the cross. To take away all our sins. Lord, we give you thanks for that. For it's through your hands that you feed and nourish us with your body and blood. It's through your hands that you give us all things. More than enough. Heavenly Father, hear our confession. Hear our private, deepest thoughts as we bring them to you. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ has heard your confession. And as a vir by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, it is my joy today to announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Through his hands, through, through his hands, his life-giving hands, he is taking it all for you. And with that, we can rejoice in him. For you are forgiven children, forgiven in his name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please stand and join me in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this day knowing that through your hands, in your hands, all things, all things have been given to us. Through your hands, Lord, the gifts have been poured out for us. Through your hands, we, we have been washed clean. Through your hands, we have received your body and blood. Through your hands, we have been made your children. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for doing that. Give us the strength and the courage that from your hands into our hands that we can take that to the world so that others will experience what you have given to us, so that others will experience... Life, forgiveness, just as we have been given life and forgiveness. Lord, we pray for those people that are in need, those people that are hurting in some way, those people struggling somehow. We think of Amy and Becca and Kathy, Kurt, Sue, Palmer, Tara and King. We, we lift up Bob and Clarence and, and Fred, Heinke, Susan, Terry and Gil. For, for Bob, Freeze, as he's going through a bout with cancer and his wife, Fran, who, who's struggling with him through this. Help Bob at this time. Give him some he, the, the, the gift of healing. And for his wife, Fran, give her patience and courage. Help her through this moment as she struggles. Lord, we know that you are with them and we give you all glory and praise and we, we thank you for holding her in your hands. We celebrate with Cheryl as she is recovering from shoulder surgery and for Margo who is prepping for knee surgery. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for all those other people we know are in need of healing. For Loretta who is now in memory care, give her, give her peace. Help the family as they, as they walk through this with her. For Gil, as he is, is going through healing, needing the, 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 the miracle of healing. Lord, we know that you are the great physician, and according to your will, you will heal him. Give him peace, give him comfort, be with the family as they surround him, and walk with him in this. And for Christine, who's walking through her own struggles with transplant medicine. Lord, we, we know that in your hands all things will work out for, for your good. And Heavenly Father, we, we commend these people to you. We commend all who are struggling with personal health, mental health, addictions, spiritual health. We, we celebrate with many good things, with, with Bill whose test results were good. 
For those that have traveled and returned, those that are still traveling and just enjoying time with family and friends. For gifts that we have brought forward, these gifts given, and our gifts of time and talents also, Lord, help us use them for your glory. We celebrate birthdays this week. We, we lift up Christy Larson who will be having a birthday this week. Heavenly Father, we, we ask that you continually pour out to her the gift of life. And Lord, this week also we celebrate life, life in your name, life won through, through your son Jesus. As the, the family of Carol Graham come together and grieve her loss, but celebrate victory won by you. Wrap your loving arms around them as they are traveling from far places to come here to, to just to celebrate her life, to remember who she was on earth, how you blessed her, and how she was a witness for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for calling Carol home as a good and faithful servant. All these things, Lord, we lay before you and all the things we may not have said, we will say as we pray that absolutely perfect prayer that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so from his hands, in his hands, the feast that we have will never end. And so we come today and rejoice in that. that we are being fed and nourished by him. And so on the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks... He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And together with that same assurance, we can say, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away. In the waves of his mercy, as deep cries out to deep, we sing, come Lord Jesus, come, come Lord Jesus, come, come. Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come, all who are thirsty, all who Tip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away. 
in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out to deep we sing come lord jesus come come lord jesus come come lord jesus come lord jesus come come lord jesus And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may it strengthen and preserve you from this day forth forevermore, knowing that in his hands forgiveness is continually poured out each and every moment of our lives. And so we go and we serve him so that others can know this same gift that through his hands to our hands and to our hands to the world, they may know the joy and the forgiveness of Jesus. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Great is your love and justice, God. You wrestle with a sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love. Great is your love and justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember. Your grace, 
Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. So remember. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Yeah, your grace is enough. Heaven reaching down to us. Your grace is enough for me. God, I see your grace is enough. I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me. For me. So go in peace and serve our Lord, and together we say thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.